People, as I said a while ago, would compare the generation, their generation to theirs. Wag na po natin gamitin yung ganong logic, kasi iba yung generation nila. Hindi narin uubra yung mga ganitong mga uh, sentences. Anak, nung panahon namin, ayan. Ay, naku, hindi na uubra yan. Nung panahon namin, wala namang text-text eh. Oh. Don't compare. Eh talagang ganyan, we will have to adjust. So it's not a generation gap. It's a generation difference. And we have to uh, just honor who they are and adjust also as they are adjusting to us. Oh, sino nga ba sila talaga? According to one study, medyo hindi na siya ganun ka recent, they are special. Why? As I said a while ago, ito yung mga inalagaan ng mga magulang na ayaw nilang maranasan yung kahirapang dinanas nila. And at the time that this generation were born, ang daming possibilities for i-enroll mo sa taekwondo pag summer, swimming classes, piano classes, art classes, special. Eh, nung panahon nyo, wala namang ganyan-ganyan. Di po ba, ma'am? Maakyat kayo ng puno ng bayabas. Nangunguha kayo ng kay Mito sa ano. Eh, hindi na ganyan ngayon eh. Di ba? Kaya medyo naging special sila. They're sheltered because the per parents perceive the world to be unsafe or dangerous. So medyo, anak, uwi ka na ng nine ha. And nine pa lang nag-uumpisa yung buhay ng teenager. Vampira nga, di ba? O, oh, tapos pauwiin mo ng nine. They are more confident. Because they have learned so many skills, they are actually more confident. And believe me, they are team-oriented. In a good way and in a bad way. Nabanggit ko kanina yung, uh, that they will not snitch or make sumbong. In a good way, they are good team members. They help each other. Okay? They are also achieving. They would want to make a mark in the world. I will be better than my parents. Kind of thing. Although they are pressured. Sa dami nga naman ng choices, they get to be pressured. Anak, bakit wala ka pang trabaho? Bakit five years nasa college ka pa rin? They feel pressured, okay? Yet, they're also conventional, sa totoo lang. Kahit may konting anga sila, may konting uh, pagka-rebelde. They are conventional. My, when I do retreats, workshops, recollections for the youth, I find that they want some kind of structure. They want some kind of uh, something that they believed in. And they, they want to contribute to that. They want to... Conventional meaning, may pagka-traditional din sila. Except that they don't know how to express it. That's where we come in to help them. Okay? Oh, guess what? I found out also, just not just from studies, that they have, they have three values that are up there. And I call it the three Fs. Ma ma ano pala to? Malakas pa rin sa kanila. One, faith. Kahit pa nag experimento sila about their faith systems, what they believe in, who God is, what God is for them, faith is very strong, whatever their expression of faith is. Because nakita nila sa examples nyo, and yung pangalawa is family, yun na nga. Malaking, malaking factor yan to why or how they have become the way they are. Both positive and negative. 
Ano yung pangatlong F? Friends. So faith, family, and friends. Top in their value system. Next one, they have needs. And when I explain to you what a teenager is going through, they have their particular needs. Pero do not forget this. They have so many strengths. Dami nilang alam gawin. And if we can just harness all of this knowledge, all of this kakayahan, I remember giving a uh, leadership recollection slash workshop for uh, a particular city. Ito yung mga leaders ng mga kabataan. I was just so amazed that ang simple na activity, what will you do if you were the politician or if you were the head of the local government unit? Ano yung mga gagawin yung programa for your town or city. Oh my God! Ang galing! Ang galing! And, and Father Edwin is here. I remember having a conversation with him about working with the youth. And he said, it's now time for the youth to really have an active part because they can contribute. Ang dami po nilang alam. We harness that. Of course, there are challenges which I have mentioned already a while ago and they want engagement. Even if I said they are feeling quite alone and lonely, they want to connect. They want to engage. And they have that motivation. Wag lang natin patayin yung motivation nila. They really have something to contribute is what I'm saying. Ano nakaka-turn off sa kanila? Bakit hindi na lang sila sasali? Maraming katanungan eh. So for example, how they criticize the church? Eh, hindi naman kami pinapakinggan. Kaya nga ang ganda, kasi this is the year of the youth. And later on, I'll talk a little bit about that. And Pope Francis encourages the involvement of the youth now. Even our own, our very own churches, our very own local church is active on this right now. Okay? It's their time to shine. So, Having all that, having said all that, from the point of view naman of the Pinoy, what are they saying? Anong boses nila? Anong gusto nilang ipaalam sa atin? And I, I take it from what they wrote during the last year, sa May, they came together, the youth came together, came up with a very beautiful letter. And this is what they're saying, no? In the year of the youth. That they have goals for the year of the youth. Ito yan ngayon, di ba? This is the year of the youth, right? What are they saying? Uh, they would, our first, their first goal is that they should be given a, a chance for formation. They want to be formed. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng formed? Maholma, di ba? Formed into what? Ako simple lang sagot ko. When I when I give my lectures to my students in my uh, class, how do you form a person? To me, it's an integration of four things, no? An integration of the head, which is your logic, reason, intelligence, cognitive processes, integrated with the heart, the second age, with emotionally regulated feelings affect hand behavior dapat tugma tugma lahat yan alam mo ang tama may nafeel ka and your behavior is aligned with this but more than that i suggest a letter h that's up here i call it spirituality or holy longing I'm borrowing a word from Ron Rolheiser. He calls spirituality the longing for the divine, a relationship with someone higher, an expression of your passion, of your deepest motivation. That's the holy longing. So holy longing, head, heart, and hands. Ang simple pag-usapan, mahirap gawin. Because most of the time, we know what is right, but when no one is looking, we do the opposite. Okay? What else? They want that they be included in community, that they have contribution to the community. There are three levels of relating, intrapersonal, 
interpersonal and metapersonal. Intrapersonal is how do I relate to myself and the God within me? Interpersonal is how do I relate to the other, to the others, and the God within them? And metapersonal, which is part of community, how do I relate to community, society, and institutions, and the God that flows through it? Youth in mission, hindi titigil dyan sa pagiging aware lang. Kailangan they will be sent forth to do something, action. And then youth ministry and youth ministers, who will they be as ministers? Kasi tayong mga nagiging magkakaedad na, we will have to let them have the active role later on. In fact, especially now. So this is uh, what's happening to what they're saying ano dagdagan pa natin sabi nila this is how they phrased it on behalf of our and this was the open letter of the Filipino youth to the Catholic Church in the Philippines they say, they stated on behalf of our Filipino youth like the two disciples of Emmaus we will tell Jesus the son of Mary our situation our concerns and our youthful dreams for the church and for the society there's a longing for them to be heard just like the two disciples walking along in uh, towards Emmaus and daming katanungan bakit tayo iniwan bakit ito yung nangyari so kagaya na mga youth niya, dami rin katanungan. But they would want to journey with Jesus along the way, is what they're now telling us. And who is Jesus? Diba we're all, embod we're all images of Christ and God. Yan ba nakikita nila sa atin? Maybe not. Am I making sense? Maybe not. That's why it is also our duty being the elders or the older people, hindi lang sila may hamon na buuin yung kanilang 4Hs, pati tayo we're on a continuing journey of also integrating our head, heart, hands, and our holy longing. Magpakatotoo din tayo. ba? Because tayo ang kanilang gagayahin. Next, they say that uh, these are some of their personal traits. So this can validate some of what I already said, and these are, uh, or there may be additions to what they are longing for. Sabi nila, they are life-giving. Totoo? Sure. They are dynamic. Yes, we, told, uh, we talked about that a while ago. They are overflowing with blessings, and they are willing and open to learn and to grow. Pinagbigyan ba natin sila dito? And that's where we would come in again, ano? Ito, validate, validation of what we said earlier. They are searching for their own identity, meaning, and purpose. They are also being called to act, but they also need guidance and formation. Hindi lang na sila lang. Um, patuloy to, they're, they're, they're confused nga eh. So there needs to be a prefrontal cortex, a break system, a guiding force that will help, le help them along the way. And they have gifts. They, are life, but, uh, they have life-given and life-giving gifts. Tama ba, my dear youth? Opo. Big heart, small heart kayo? Wala na, natulog na yung hearts nila. Ano ba? Small heart, medium heart, big heart. Yakaw. Lana. <laughs> Absent na mga puso. Again, small heart ba kayo? Medium heart or big heart? Nge? Pakita nyo nga. There you go. Oh, they talked about their spiritual life. They said that they are more spiritual than religious. Naintindihan nyo ba to? When they say they're more spiritual than religious, eh bakit nyo pinagagalitan yung teenager nyo na ayaw magsimba? I'll explain a little bit. What 
does spiritual mean versus religious? Okay, spiritual is more, as I said a while ago, yung integration of the four H's, is more personal. That there is a relationship in the three dimensions of relating, the God within me, the God in the other, and the God in community. Religious is... Uh, sometimes we follow a certain spirituality to express religiosity or being religious. Religious because we're Roman Catholics, we follow the expression of the Catholic faith. Magsimba, magnobina, all of that. They're all good. But they would want to be seen as expressing their faith and belief systems in a more personal way. Okay? So sabi nila, they're more spiritual than religious. Um, ay, oh, oh. You know, when I give uh, recollections, I can see the yung longing to know about who they are in all the dimensions of relating. The God within, the God in the other, and the God in society. Kailangan din nila makarinig ng mga ganitong mensahe. Hindi lang yung puro leadership training na naman. Liga na naman. They like that, yes. But there's this deep longing, I tell you. Next one. Uh, longing for a deeper relationship with our Lord and heighten our experience of faith through personal prayer. Ah, yes. When we do workshops and we teach them how to pray creatively. Do you know how to pray creatively? Paano yun, Miss Lay? So many ways. It can be through active imagination. It could be through art. It could be through music. Hindi lang yung nobina. They're all good. I, I tell you, rosary, they're all good. Of course. But we use their own way of expressing as well. We allow them that. Okay? Uh, participation in various prayer gatherings. And... For liturgical uh, activities and prayer activities, you might want them to lead rather than you giving the template of how it should be. Okay? And then in quotes, our apparent distrust and doubts on the credibility of the church is but an expression of our burning desire to see her truly living the joy of the gospel. Kasi nga, kung mali ang pinapakita nating mga example, they would doubt our credibility and they would doubt the institutional church. Okay? What else? The family, as I said, is one of their top in their value system. What are they saying? Uh, they recognize that the family is the first experience, where they get their first experience of love, care, and belongingness. And especially the formation of values. However, um, the family now ha has changed. Iba iba na ang constitution ng family ngayon. There are now families with OFW uh, parents. We have more single family parents. We have more um, blended families. Alam niyo yung blended? Uh, isang magasawa or magkakapole na magkakaanak tapos maghihiwalay sila at magkakaroon ng bagong mga relasyon magkakaanak uli yan ang blended may mga ganyan na ngayon may mga pamilya rin na uh, ang nagpapalaki sa mga bata ay ang mga lola dahil nasa abroad yung mga anak so iba na ang constitution ng family ngayon so as they said uh, there are many different family situations present for each of us but family will always be part of our hopes and aspirations um, alam nyo po sa totoo lang as a counselor and one giving uh, recollections and retreats when we touch on the family especially when we do a genogram processing genogram parang family tree po yan and then we look at the emotional relationships among members that's usually where their wounds come from the family because the family can be a part of healing a source of healing it could also be the source of wounding the family can be the source of um, victory. It could also be the source of your stress and depression. So they want, you know, 
to make the family a better place where they can grow as well. And hopefully when they will become parents as well, they build their own families also, this will be an important input for them. So finally, I'd like to put this, no? The teen brain is still under construction. Tanong na mga parents sa akin, Miss Lay, paano yan? Kung under construction ng brain ng isang teenager, where do we come in as parents? Paano kami ang magiging prefrontal cortex nila or paano kami maging brake system nila? Alalay lang po tayo, no? And later on, I will be giving you practical tips towards the end of our talk. So, in conclusion about our teen brain, the limbic system or the emotional brain is now based in reproductive hormones. Complicated na nga. There are nerve proliferations and prunings. Tapos active ang pleasure and reward center. There is still an immature prefrontal cortex. Therefore, it can, the effect is moody, frustrated, and an experimenting teen. So this is what you will observe. There will be ambivalence. Ano ibig sabihin na ambivalence? Not quite sure about themselves. So they swing back and forth between world of childhood and adulthood. There are emotional upheavals and mood swings. They are hating their parents one time and then adoring them the next. That's the ambivalence. There's, ah, ito, loneliness. Actually, even if they have like one, 3,000 friends on Facebook, sa totoo lang, they're lonely. There's a feeling of emptiness uh, inside and some kind of depression because they do not know yet who or she, who he or she is. There is that self-consciousness I was talking to you about earlier. May awkwardness pa. At saka sabi ko nga, the self-esteem is not yet too. Hindi pa siya buong-buo. Communication frenzy. So kung may ganong ano, kung may loneliness or at saka may ambivalence, how they would behave is to try to connect by communication frenzy, yun nga, texting, messaging, etc. Ah, sleep patterns. Part of it is, sabi ko nga, yung laziness, part of the brain na activate. There's also a chemical called uh, melatonin that's activated. Kaya para silang mga aswang, na ang, uh, aswang ba? Ang tu, ang, ano yan? Tulog sa umaga, gising sa gabi. Aswang nga? Ha? Bampira? Oo. Uh -uh. Yan, ang pattern nila. Hindi po yan ka, hindi yan laziness. May nangyayari po yan sa brain na nagre-release ng melatonin. Mas masarap mag, maglaro ng computer, mag-internet sa gabi. Hindi yan nag-aaral, promise. Mag-aaral lang yan pagdating ng malapit ng exam. That's also normal. Normal behavior. Sasagarin nila yung kakayanan nila. The experiment. Eh, kaya ko naman palang mag-cram. Di mag -cram. Hi, I'm glad. I realize ko na yan. Kasi ang dami na, na naming pinagawayan ng mga anak ko dahil dito. Agree, mga dear parents? Agree, my dear seminarians and young adults? I know, ang mababait ang mga seminarians, nag-aaral po sila. Diba, no? Yes, ma'am. Oo. Nag-aaral po sila. Peer groups, alam nyo na po ito. Uh, they are still risk takers, so uh, they, they, they have choices, so we have to guide them there. And there you go. It, the brain is under construction. That's how I would like to explain why a teenager behaves the way he does. I-complicate pa natin, lalo, ha? Nagdagan pa natin ng komplikasyon. Yan! Ang ginagalawang mundo ngayon ng mga teenagers at young Pinoys is a virtual world. 
And even if we call it a virtual world, I am guessing it's the real world that they are really uh, engaged in. Most of their time, a service says that most of their time are spent on internet, Facebook. Um, what else? Instagram. So I, I see my sons. An example would be my sons. Pagka nakikita ko yung ginagawa nila sa computer nila, I'm amazed. I'm super amazed that there are so many windows or tabs open. Alam niyo yung tabs? Naka-on yung, naka yung Facebook. Meron dyan. Uh, Naka-on yung YouTube. Yun sa taas. YouTube, Facebook, naglalaro. May research. Daw. Tapos meron pang nakakabit sa tenga. Naka Spotify siguro, di ba? Eh, hindi lang yun. May telepono pang katabi yung, ano, konting galaw ng telepono, tingin. That's it. That's their normal world now. So, um, it's a little bit more challenging to, to really understand because all of these things are happening. A recent research also says that uh, sa McCann Erickson research, the, the Pinoy teen is actually very active. In fact, we are very high among Asians and even other countries in terms of the volume of texting, the volume of internet and uh, social media usage. So our challenge therefore is this. They are no longer children. They are emerging adults. Therefore, the task is to establish a conscious identity. One of the stormiest times in the life cycle, doubly difficult because as I explained a while ago, it goes alongside the parents' midlife crisis. Kaya kayong mga parents, tayong mga parents pala, kasali ako dyan, I suggest you also have your own life. Hindi yung nakafocus lang sa ating mga anak. Because they don't, ayaw na yung makipag-holding hand sa atin sa mall. Hindi na yan cool. Ayaw na yan magpahalik in front of their friends. Ay nako, hindi na yan chill. Kaya kayo na lang, have a life of your own. Have your own barkada, date group, mag-aral ba? Okay? Yes, Miss Lay, ganyan ba? Sabihan niyo si mami, masyadong dikit. Helicopter parent masyado. Okay, now let's talk about, if I were talking in general about the Pinoy teen, expand natin ng konti kasi lagi nyo naririnig yung word na millennial. Tama? Ano ba yan, Miss Lay? Ang millennials are, kung sinabi ko, ang adolescents are aged 14 to 24 or 10 to 24 more or less. Ang millennials or young adults are from 24 to around 36 years old. More or less. Ganyan na pala. So, what is happening about our millennials? Unfortunately, they are mostly misunderstood. Parang may bad press ang pagiging millennial. Parang lagi silang judge as not a good generation. Kasi we compare our generation to theirs. Sasabihin ng mga older generation, ah, they are entitled, they are lazy, they are too relaxed or laid back, they are self-centered or absorbed, they are indecisive, they have no sense of urgency. May pagka may pagkatotoo rin naman to mga descriptions na to. But my invitation for you is to understand them better. Explain ko na in a way why they feel this. Uh, from from our earlier talk, no? why are they entitled? Kasi yung mga parents usually are coming from a time or a generation na naghirap tayo or we had to go through different difficulties in our life. So ang thinking ng parent to a millennial is, yung naranasan kong kahirapan noon, ayaw kong maranasan ng anak ko. Tama? Yun ang thinking natin, di ba? But unfortunately, my dear parents, we are now uh, raising a bunch of kids who will feel, andyan naman si mommy eh, or andyan naman si daddy. Kaya nga, ang turing sa kanila ay entitled. 
But guess what? There's more to this eh. Yung lazy laid back, kasi nga entitled na sila. Tapos yung explanation ko about the brain a while ago, there you, are, there you go. Self-centered and absorbed daw sila because they're still looking for their own identity. Okay? And then they're indecisive. Siyempre, ko ako rin ang millennial ngayon, I can be indecisive. Pagdating ng high school, fourth year, uh, you will take the college entrance exam, right? Right? And then after that, you will decide what course to take, right? Okay. You enroll in a university. Kung before, ang courses lang that are okay or are encouraged by our parents, mag-teacher ka anak, mag-doktor ka, mag-abogado ka, mag-CPA ka. Tama? Eh ngayon, just ko Lord. Ilang pages ng kurso? O kunwari, fine arts. Naku, under fine arts, ang dami pang sanga-sanga. Eh, di ba, mahirap nga naman mag-decide pagka ganun. Tama ba, my dear young people? Tapos, wala ka pang kasiguraduhan sa ka magtatrabaho afterwards. Di ba? There. And, um... Most people, as I said a while ago, would compare the generation, their generation to theirs. Wag na po natin gamitin yung ganong logic, kasi iba yung generation nila. Hindi narin uubra yung mga ganitong mga uh, sentences. Anak, nung panahon namin, ayan. Ay, naku, hindi na uubra yan. Nung panahon namin, wala namang text-text eh. Oh. Don't compare. Eh talagang ganyan, we will have to adjust. So it's not a generation gap. It's a generation difference. And we have to uh, just honor who they are and adjust also as they are adjusting to us. people, as I said a while ago, would compare the generation, their generation to theirs. Wag na po natin gamitin yung ganong logic kasi iba yung generation nila. Hindi na rin uubra yung mga ganitong mga uh, sentences. Anak, nung panahon namin, ayan. Ay, naku, hindi na uubra yan. Nung panahon namin, wala namang text-text eh. Oh. Don't compare. Eh talagang ganyan, we will have to adjust. So it's not a generation gap. It's a generation difference. And we have to uh, just honor who they are and adjust also as they are adjusting to us. Oh, sino nga ba sila talaga? According to one study, medyo hindi na siya ganun ka recent, they are special. Why? As I said a while ago, ito yung mga inalagaan ng mga magulang na ayaw nilang maranasan yung kahirapang dinanas nila. And at the time that this generation were born, ang daming possibilities for i-enroll mo sa taekwondo pag summer, swimming classes, piano classes, art classes, special. Eh, nung panahon nyo, wala namang ganyan-ganyan. Di po ba, ma'am? Maakit kayo ng puno ng bayabas. Nangunguha kayo ng kay Mito sa ano. Eh, hindi na ganyan ngayon eh. Di ba? Kaya medyo naging special sila. They're sheltered because the per parents perceive the world to be unsafe or dangerous. So medyo, anak, uwi ka na ng nine ha. And nine pa lang nag-uumpisa yung buhay ng teenager. Vampira nga, di ba? O. Oh, Tapos pauwiin mo ng nine. They're more confident. Because they have learned so many skills, they're actually more confident. 
And believe me, they are team-oriented in a good way and in a bad way. Nabanggit ko kanina yung uh, that they will not snitch or make sumbong. In a good way, they are good team members. They help each other. Okay? They are also achieving. They would want to make a mark in the world. I will be better than my parents. Kind of thing. Although they are pressured. Sa dami nga naman ng choices, they get to be pressured. Anak, bakit wala ka pang trabaho? Bakit five years nasa college ka pa rin? They feel pressured, okay? Yet, they're also conventional. Sa totoo lang, kahit may konting anga sila, may konting uh, pagkarebelde, they are conventional. My, when I do retreats, workshops, recollections for the youth, I find that they want some kind of structure. They want some kind of uh, something that they believed in, and they, they want to contribute to that. They want to conventional meaning, may pagka-traditional din sila. Except that they don't know how to express it. That's where we come in to help them. Okay? Oh, guess what? I found out also, just not just from studies, that they have, they have three values that are up there. And I call it the three Fs. Ma ma ano pala to? Malakas pa rin sa kanila. One, faith. Kahit pa nag experimento sila about their faith systems, what they believe in, who God is, what God is for them, faith is very strong, whatever their expression of faith is. Because nakita nila sa examples nyo, and yung pangalawa is family, yun na nga. Malaking, malaking factor yan to why or how they have become the way they are. Both positive and negative. Ano yung pangatlong F? Friends. So faith, family, and friends. Top in their value system. Next one. They have needs. And when I explain to you what a teenager is going through, they have their particular needs. Pero do not forget this. They have so many strengths. Dami nilang alam gawin. And if we can just harness all of this knowledge, all of this kakayahan, I remember giving a uh, leadership recollection slash workshop for uh, a particular city. Ito yung mga leaders ng mga kabataan. I was just so amazed that ang simple na activity, what will you do if you were the politician or if you were the head of the local government unit? Ano yung mga gagawin yung programa for your town or city. Oh my God! Ang galing! Ang galing! And, and Father Edwin is here. I remember having a conversation with him about working with the youth. And he said, it's now time for the youth to really have an active part because they can contribute. Ang dami po nilang alam. We harness that. Of course, there are challenges, which I have mentioned already a while ago, and they want engagement. Even if I said they are feeling quite alone and lonely, they want to connect. They want to engage. And they have that motivation. Wag lang natin patayin yung motivation nila. They really have something to contribute, is what I'm saying. Ano nakaka-turn off sa kanila? Bakit hindi na lang sila sasali? Maraming katanungan eh. So for example, how they criticize the church? Eh, hindi naman kami pinapakinggan. Kaya nga ang ganda, kasi this is the year of the youth. And later on, I'll talk a little bit about that. And Pope Francis encourages the involvement of the youth now. Even our own, our very own churches, our very own local church is active on this right now. Okay? It's their time to shine. So, Having all that, having said all that, from the point of view naman of the Pinoy, what are they saying? Anong boses nila? Anong gusto nilang ipaalam sa atin? And I, I take it from what they wrote during the last year, sa May, they came together, the youth came together, came up with a very beautiful letter. 
and this is what they're saying, no? The year of the youth. That they have goals for the year of the youth. Ito yan ngayon, di ba? This is the year of the youth, right? What are they saying? Uh, they would, our first, their first goal is that they should be given a, a chance for formation. They want to be formed. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng formed? Maholma, di ba? Formed into what? Ako simple lang sagot ko. When I, when I give my lectures to my students in my uh, class, how do you form a person? To me, it's an integration of four things, no? An integration of the head, which is your logic, reason, intelligence, cognitive processes. Integrated with the heart, the second H. With emotionally regulated feelings, affect. Hand behavior. Dapat tugma tugma lahat yan. Alam mo ang tama, may nafeel ka, and your behavior is aligned with this. But more than that, I suggest a letter H that's up here. I call it spirituality or holy longing. I'm borrowing a word from Ron Rolheiser. He calls spirituality the longing for the divine, a relationship with someone higher, an expression of your passion, of your deepest motivation. That's the holy longing. So holy longing, head, heart, and hands. Ang simple pag-usapan, mahirap gawin. Because most of the time, we know what is right, but when no one is looking, we do the opposite. Okay? What else? They want that they be included in community, that they have contribution to the community. There are three levels of relating, intrapersonal, interpersonal and metapersonal intrapersonal is how do i relate to myself and the god within me interpersonal is how do i relate to the other to the others and the god within them and metapersonal which is part of community how do i relate to community, society, and institutions, and the God that flows through it. Meron po bang magtatano? Maybe one from the adults and then one from the youth. Ako muna, may tanong ako. Tinamaan ka ba? Di ba? Yan naman ang start ng ano, pag-iibigan. Tinamaan ka, di ba? Swak sa pool, di ba? Eh, hindi lang dapat manatili ang hugot dyan. Yung tama, kailangan tanggalin yung araw. Masakit eh. At gamitin para sa okay. Dami nyo natutunan. Eh hanggang tuto lang, wala. Paglabas nyo, dyan ang hamon. Sa totoo lang, ang dami kong nagawang mali pala bilang magulang sa totoo lang. Sa totoo lang. Buti na lang pala, medyo nag-level up ako ng konti. May pag-asa pa, ibig sabihin. Alam nyo yung the best compliment ko sa mga anak ko? If I may share... That's my mom. She has a life. Chill. Oh, di ba? And when I'm chill to them, they're chill with me. Pati mga heartbreak nila, nakukwento nila. Oh. Pati mga ama na anak ko, mga seminarista, di ba? Chill ba si Miss Lay? Yung mga nakasalamuha ko na. Oh, di ba? May mga umiyak na sa akin, sa inyo. Balde-balde, di ba? Oh. Tango ng tango, Yes. Kasi ginamit natin yung sinabi ko kanina. Congruence, empathy, and unconditional positive regard. Katanungan po. Nagningilay pa. Sakit ng tama. Okay. Hindi pwedeng band-aid lang yan. Magnanana yan. 
Yes. Kaya tano ni Doy. Okay, there. Bongbo yung pangalan. From our youth. Uh, good morning po, Mr. Thank you very much po for a very um, substantial po na information about Pinoy you know, youth. Uh, ngayon po, noong uh, February 14 po ay sinabi po sa amin ni Father Rico na marami po ngayon ang nag, uh, nagiging uh, 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 bisexual or effeminate or naging uh, boy, tomboy or boyish. It's because of the ano, parang pagkakulang po ng, ng father image. Ngayon po, um, is it possible po na mapunuan po ng mga pari or kung sino man yung pagkukulang ng mga biological fathers? And if it's possible, how can we do it po? Of course, no? In the first place, it's not just the father, no? Meron tayong tinatawag ngayon na DD, DDS, parang ano, no? <laughs> Dad Deficiency Syndrome. Eh, kung lang yung iniisip nyo, ha? <laughs> Hindi ka DDS. Dad Deficiency Syndrome. Yung bang, uh, sometimes, the father may be present physically, but emotionally absent. And it, of course, it can affect how a child, an adolescent, develops in later life. So there will be probably a feeling of loss. And some say that it can contribute to how you um, resolve your gender identity or sexuality identity. Na kung wala kang father figure, baka maging malambot ka, etc. Well, these are not yet, um, kumbaga, hindi, wala pang talagang yun ang conclusion. What I'm trying to say now, a more practical way of putting it is, when I said intra-intermeta, if you are the hurt child, because wala kang naging father figure, one way of doing it intrapersonally is how can you parent you? How can you now become a parent to that inner child who feels wala siyang naging effective parent, whether mother or father? How do you do that? Maybe a kindness project to the self. Don't be too tough on yourself. Don't be too critical on yourself. Learn to have that self-esteem I was talking about a while ago. That's the intrapersonal level. Moving towards the interpersonal level, relationship with others, definitely, as I said a while ago, we will be needing guides like coaches, mentors, um, spiritual directors, counselors, a kuya who can guide you. Not to fill up, not to fill in your perceived pagkakawala ng tatay image in your life. These are just guides. So they will help. How about at the metapersonal level, at, at societal, more community, more uh, bigger scope? Then, if we are all good human beings, then the father na nawawala or kulang sa isang pagkatao can be filled in by activities of the parish, of the church, and community. Is that helpful? Yes. You can work three ways, intrapersonally, interpersonally, getting a guide, mentor, coach, spiritual director, and metapersonally, by the support system of the whole community. Okay? Hindi tama yun eh, yung equation na dalawa kang tatay, magiging ganyan ka, no? Because to be effeminate, to be gay, is not just that. It's a question of both nurture and nurture. It's a combination of so many factors. How you were cared for, the environment, is it genetic, debatable pa yan? It's a lot of things. The important thing, binubuo mo ang pagkatao mo. Uh, I'm Dali Cruz from Don Bosco Parish of Makati. Uh, it's really very, we're really very thankful for you today that you were able to articulate all these beautiful things that you've said. 
in a very simply manner and it's really really understood and we thank you for that and we also thank the Lord for it it's my question is now that we are really listening trying to listen to the uh, cravings and um, to address the needs of the youth now um, in all these things happening and what the Holy Father is doing we really appreciate it and we want more from the church as to having these spiritual directors available to any age in our society because there's so many things I've been listening to a lot of friends and this need spiritual guidance but we have very few spiritual director available so th that's my question what's the question again the question is how can the church address that we'll be able to have a spiritual director available for every age okay how can the church ano magagawa ng simbahan okay tanong ko muna sino ang simbahan tayo so dahil nakinig kayo ngayon I don't know if may tusok dyan you might want to be training yourselves to become spiritual directors later on hindi na to trabaho ng pare di ba Father Edwin hindi by the way to be a spiritual director doesn't necessarily mean na alam mo yung kailangan tahakin ng isang tao in his spiritual life basically lang naman ang ang trabaho ng isang spiritual director uh, of course the assumption is binubuo niya yung 4Hs niya di ba? may mature sense of self siya may wisdom siya kasi ang spiritual direction is really more of journeying with the other in his relationship with God in his prayer life yun ang trabaho ng spiritual director eh kung wala kang prayer life you will become like a blind leading the blind so somehow there will be some kind of training needed also aside from you developing your own 4Hs there are um, for example ito, ito yung alam ko in Ateneo, we have a center, the Center for Ignatian Spirituality. They give modules to help people learn how to become SDs or spiritual directors. Maybe that's the invitation for the institutional church to have more of these programs and modules available to the lay people. Yeah, maybe. On my personal capacity, I can train counselors but not SD because I'm not towards, my charism is not towards spiritual direction. You all have gifts, okay? Even if you are already a dual citizen, 60s, my 20% discount ka na. It's not too late to learn. We're always for forever learning. Malay nyo, no? You can, you, can, you can ask your priest, how can I become a spiritual director? Or what? Pero sa totoo lang, some priests are even not uh, gifted with that. So, it's also uh, something that can be learned by those with that passion for it. Totoo po yun. Totoo po yun. Na med medyo may kakulangan. Pero we're hopeful that the youth will also provide that later on. Kayo po, ma'am, why not? Yes. That's a beautiful question. Hamon sa simbahan. And I, I'm glad that you answered with, ang simbahan ay tayo. Ma'am? Okay na po. Oh. So, uh, thank you for that. You can email your questions to ma'am and then if I can, I will answer them. Oh.